Edie answers the phone with the phrase, Pegden residence, lady of the house speaking, before Roy Clark's classic snob creation, Hyacinth Bucket Bouquet, broadcast from 1990, also introduced herself in the same manner. In the studio set of the church hall, just after Compo says, Nora keeps backing away from my suit, Norm, a member of the studio crew can be seen in the kitchen. The same pub exterior is used twice in this episode with slightly different signage outside. The first interior was filmed on location, the second interior was a studio set. When the menfolk realise the truck has come to collect the skip that they have left Goff in, they leave the pub and rush off across the road. As the camera shows the reverse angle, we see the truck drive away. The truck is not even in the same street and it won't go far as it's a dead end. Clocks on a set are usually stopped, showing a time that is likely to be okay for the supposed time of day, to try and avoid continuity issues with the time jumping forwards or backwards. But there are some clocks you can't stop. In this episode, outside Howard's home, the church clock behind Clegg seems to move normally until the last few shots when it's jumped about ten minutes. Compo and Clegg inform Seymour that the caning of children is now illegal. Despite him knowing about it three years earlier in the 1987 special Big Day at Dream Acres. The first episode of series 12 is one of only two episodes where two of the third men appear, although they never meet in this episode. While Compo and Clegg are roaming about, they find Howard and Marina lurking in an alleyway. As they all leave, we see Foggy at the other end of the alleyway. The building in the background is Auntie's shop without the fake shop front added. When Foggy goes to ask Wesley to make his polo sticks, Wesley is in Ackroyd's workroom seen in the Christmas 1988 special Crumbs where the waterbed was stored. Wesley's usual workshop is seen in other episodes of this series. In the series one episode of 2.4 Children, titled When the Going Gets Tough, the Tough Go Shopping, first broadcast on the 17th of September 1991, Bill and Ben are watching television and we see a brief clip of this episode on their TV set. When Clegg and Howard move house mid-series, the move was not planned. Producer-director Alan Bell wasn't prepared to increase the compensation payment to one of the householders at the previous location, so a new location was found. A brief scene was added showing Clegg moving furniture and Howard asking what it was like to be rehoused to explain the change of location. Although Auntie Wainwright first appeared in the December 1988 Christmas special Crumbs and returned between series 11 and 12 in the Christmas 1989 special What Santa Brought for Nora Then, she was not a regular until the start of series 14. So when Compo needed an outfit for his Maurice Chevalier impression, they went to the Help the Aged shop. When Nora makes a rare visit to Compo's home, what appears to be the mangle Seymour was supposed to help deliver to her friend in the series 11 episode Three Men and a Mangle is at the bottom of his entrance steps in the studio set, but it's not evident in the exterior location shot. This episode is the second time we see the interior of Howard and Pearl's home since they moved, but it's not the set used for the previous occasion in the series 10 episode The Day of the Welsh Ferret. However, this set does look more like the real interior and the sets used in later series. Compo is looking glum, so Marina rests his head on her blouse while trying to comfort him, so Howard tries to drag Compo away. This is not dissimilar to several occasions in open all hours when Granville is being comforted by Nurse Gladys and Arkwright drags him away. Wesley is supposed to be clearing rubbish out of the shed. In the junk in the back of the Land Rover, Foggy finds an old petrol can that it appears Wesley was going to throw out. Today, the petrol can is worth about £40. Foggy asks the librarian for books on silent killing. The unnamed librarian was Brian Wilde's wife, Eva Stewart. She also appeared with him in an episode of Wyatt's Watchdogs. The real interior of Howard and Pearl's home is used, although we only see from the front door to the stairs. As you can see in the image of the real house, this lower floor is really the kitchen. This is the only room on the ground floor. In later episodes using the studio set, the kitchen door is next to the stairs, but in the real house there is no door there. There are fewer spindles on the real staircase than in the later studio set. 
as this brief scene is the only time the interior is seen in this series, it would probably not have been cost effective to erect the studio set. Before joining the series as a regular cast member in series 21, Tom Owen, Bill Owen's son, made a brief cameo appearance in this episode as a bank customer. Wesley provides Compo with a motorbike to ride. Two bikes were used, the real one that Wesley rode on and a lightweight replica for the effects and falls. At the ladies' coffee gathering, there is never more than one cream cake alongside various biscuits, so there's usually an undignified scramble to get it. But in this episode, Edie has provided enough chocolate eclairs for everyone. The real interior of Howard and Pearl's home is used again, although we only see from the front door to the stairs. This episode has a rare reference to the date. The inscription on the coffin shows John Bickerdyke died 25th of June 1992. The first scene in the cafe is the real cafe. Ivy and Nora are outside and it's a continuous camera shot as they walk in and try and get a customer to volunteer for the concert. After the customer leaves, the scene continues in the studio set of the cafe. We see the real interior of Howard and Pearl's home again, although we only see from the front door to the stairs. There's a curtain obscuring the view of the cooker. Gordon Warmby is listed in the end credits, but he isn't in the episode. This episode still did not have a title when the episode was being filmed. When the trio leave Auntie Wainwright's with Compo's one-man band outfit, Clegg is carrying a black and white ceramic dog that Auntie has sold him. In the following episode, you can see an identical ceramic dog in the corner of the shop window. And in the series 18 episode, Destiny and Six Bananas, there are similar dogs. So it seems Auntie has bought them in bulk. Compo says, I don't think I've ever worn braces. Well, by then he had worn them on four occasions. When the trio visit the cafe to buy hot dog rolls and sausages for the second time, they already have bags of rolls and sausages sitting on the barbecue grill. In early appearances, Marina works at Lodge's Supermarket, a real supermarket chain. In this episode, the store overlooking Homefirth bus station was used, which is now a Sainsbury's. Several other Lodge's shops were used, and after Lodge's were taken over by the co-op, the Homefirth co-op was used. We see Howard and the trio pushing the bath on a trolley up this lane and then lose control of it as it rolls downhill with Compo. However, the road where it comes to rest is really the road that is uphill from where it started to run away from. Foggy stops to chat to someone under a Land Rover, registration WCW684Y, trying to fix it. He chats to the unseen person as if he was speaking to Wesley until Wesley passes by in a different Land Rover, MOG612X. But just a few episodes before, it had been Wesley's Land Rover, so it's not really Foggy's fault. He thinks the man under it is Wesley. Compo is wearing braces for the fifth time, seen under his shirt when the inner tube device inflates. The braces might just have been for practical reasons rather than being braces that Compo would wear. In the Series 9 episode, The Ice Cream Man Cometh, Seymour had devised a similar inflatable inner tube device for Compo. Someone, presumably Wesley, has painted Dewhurst on the minibus. But in the Series 5 episode, The Flag and Further Snags, when collecting his parcel from the railway office, Foggy spells out his name D-E-W-H-U-R-S-T. However, in the Series 16 episode, The Dewhurst of Ogilby Hall, Foggy thinks he is related to the family at the hall, despite their name being spelled D-E-W-H-I-R-S-T. Auntie has given Smiler a field telephone to contact her while out in the van. It's not connected to anything, but it still rings the phone bell in the shop when he winds the handle. Field telephones are not radio telephones, they still need a wired connection. Auntie's Aladdin mobile shop van is never seen again. This episode was originally broadcast in December 1993. Roy Clark also included a mobile shop in the Opal Hours Series 2 episode, Arkwright's Mobile Store, first broadcast in March 1981. The Stone Circle is fake. It was set near Homestyle's Reservoir, used in many other episodes.